maps. What can I really say about them honestly? They're just maps. The maps in fighting are pretty much a core part of the game for obvious reasons and are pretty much key to the entire identity of fighting. Whether it's because of stylistic choices, lighting, structuring, layouts, whatever it is about maps to make maps stand out, it's just a key factor. That being said, some maps are good and some maps are awful. Some maps get redesigned, some don't for better and for worse. This is literally just going to be a tier list of maps, however, I do need to establish a criteria for a map to be included. No secret maps. This includes maps like Sunset Plain and Land of the Silent Sun. No limited time maps. This includes Dark Hearts Revenge and Pizza Palace. No old versions of maps. While I will mention them for some maps, I will only be talking about the new versions of maps in the game, but it will come into play for a few of them. And finally, I will not be ranking maps with the OST in mind, as not all maps have an original OST, and I think including the OST will skewer results for certain maps. I'll separate the video into three parts, talking about the Annihilate maps, Conquer maps, and the hybrid game mode maps last because I like ordering and I don't know, I just kinda like doing it like this. We'll also go through the maps in alphabetical order just for the sake of having some sort of order in the groups. And putting those rules into place, we have a whopping 27 maps to go through. This is going to take a while, so grab your popcorn and let's quickly get into it. Chaos Canyon has a pretty nice design, with the western theme and the train that sometimes comes through the middle, even though it barely impacts most games. The amount of high spots and the slight asymmetrical middle with the high end bridge is pretty nice, albeit I think Annihilate maps have lots of high spots are kinda meh. Other than that, most of the fights happen on even ground, which can be especially annoying with the big train tracks over the entire middle portion of the map, which can be a hindrance. However, as an Annihilate map, I think it offers some cool map options for ranged and melee fighters alike, but due to it being Annihilate, I think the map being somewhat small in scale kinda docks at some points for me personally. I'd probably put this map in B tier, I think a higher scaling could make this map an easy A tier though. Dodgeball is interesting. It has a total of 7 variations in its map layouts, however due to saving time, I don't want to individually rank every single little map variation because that's just honestly doing too much. Aside from that, I do think the scaling of this map does mesh better with Annihilate along with the two little locker rooms that can pack some power for ranged fighters or flanking routes if necessary. I also think most of the variations are fairly fun to play against, however I do want to say that the split layout is pretty mediocre overall due to its cluttered middle section, while Tea Party and Balance stand out as the best variations that are insanely, well, balanced and fun, while also keeping the small map's fast paced energy. I can't really find a good middle ground to place dodgeball, but I think factoring in every variation, I'm putting it in the B tier because some matches could get heavily lopsided, but the cool formations make it fun to play. Domino Valley used to be one of my favorite maps for some reason, but after playing it a lot, my opinion has changed a ton. I do want to say, this map still looks beautiful. It's like two castle towers and a big forest, and the whole nature vibe it gives off is honestly great, especially for these maps. And of course, I still love the domino bridges falling at the last minute, allowing for easier mobility routes. However, this map is probably one of the bigger culprits of spawn camping. While it's not as bad as the first version, you can often get matches where the enemy team can't really maneuver due to the closed in spawn area and the fact you really have no pathway to go anywhere. However, I still do think outside of that and the overall shoddy route some fighters could take, I think it's unfortunately not enough for it to be a B tier. So C tier it goes. Man, what the hell happened to this map? I get the first version was not popular for many reasons, but I will stand by that the first version was awesome. It was a stupidly claustrophobic mess of a map and that's what made it so awesome and different. It was making a map that was truly chaotic and all over the place and I don't care because I loved that very off kilter design philosophy. The remake unfortunately has none of that. Now I will give credit, I do appreciate the bigger spawn areas, making spawning and getting into the field much easier than the old version and I do think the stronger colors pop out better. 
Unfortunately, they scaled this map extremely big for no reason, which can make fights very awkward from long range, and the complete lack of good cover spots outside of ramps can make range fighters, especially slingshot, more powerful and controlling. Also, this is a bit of a nitpick, but those spiky luggage containers are simply just annoying a lot of the time. I understand them being on the big conveyor belt, but did we need them right next to the spawn entrances? Like, genuinely? Honestly, you could blame this placement on bias, but this map is D tier. This feels like a complete downgrade. Rob the Roblox Bank, in comparison, got a way better glow up. The map itself is alright enough. I do think the vents feel way less involved and unique, but I think everything else is an upgrade to the original bank. There's tons of paths you can take in a rollout, which allows for some flexibility and also prevents much spawn camping to happen. And a center of battling on the safe and under it can provide some fun fights and can also make fights happen in the insanely cramped vents, which to be fair, can be kind of funny. However, I do somewhat think these battles could barely happen much since fights usually take place in your team spawn due to the more flat ground and not needing to deal with steers for some reason. I do like the last minute where the safe flats open, which allows a different area to fight in, but it's not really utilized much by any players. Unless they play subspace, so uh, yeah. With that being said, I don't really mind this map much. It's somewhat balanced, no real spawn camping, and comebacks can be made somewhat. B tier. Welp, here we are at Roblox HQ. Design wise, it's simple enough with the desks and high buildings connecting. Nothing much. This map is funny though. I think after the Hotel Elephant remake, this right here is truly the most chaotic map in the entire game. There's three layers in this map, each having their own hilarious and stupid janks to them that makes this map feel stupid in the best possible way. The top layer is insanely open and has tons of ground to maneuver or flank with, but the middle path is cramped to hell and acts as a long choke point for anyone, especially melee fighters as range fighters can basically spray down this path. And the bottom layer has no guardrails and a special ground that affects fighters like subspace hard and acts as another flank route. This map is chaotic with tons of fights happening in closed spaces, which can make this map insanely messy to play, but in the somewhat endearing messy way, not in an annoying messy way. That being said, chaotic maps can be too much sometimes, and while you can have a fun time in HQ, you could also have a pretty unbalanced steamroll time on HQ. Or really any Annihilate map honestly, but with the simplistic design, cramped spacing, and absolute chaos, I might just need to put it in the C tier as probably the most polarizing map on this entire list. I'm going to be real with you, I don't have much to say for this map. I think the two layers of the ground and upper floor are pretty neat, but let's be real, almost every single fight is going to happen in the top layer due to the less amount of floor to use and just being easier to use. I also do love the last minute water rising, locking you to the upper floor or else you'll mostly likely die to the water damage. However, this map just falls completely because range fighters can absolutely abuse this map. There are several spots where hype players can effectively camp unless you actively target them and a ton of high spaces that can be abused. There's also barely any cover against range fighters and that also combines how the spawns can noticeably become somewhat hard to get a good approach as spawns are blocked due to the water. I generally think this map can get much more unfun due to the skill level increase and I feel like the middle ground for this will probably be B tier as I think the trampolines and water add fun gimmicks to the map and the uniqueness of it helps it stand out. Museum might be one of my favorite maps in design. Tons of cool references to things with tons of rooms packed full with things that you almost never see in normal gameplay, which really sucks, but exploring the map is pretty neat. That being said, this map is way too big. Too much stuff with collision, too much space, too much straight lines with not much cover at all, and fights usually either get carried in spawns or happen in the middle. My main issue is that not a lot of the map gets utilized as there's tons of cool rooms and such that could work perfectly with a shifting conquer point system or the escort mode. But those aren't in this map yet so this map ends up being more of an underutilized map with way too much stuff everywhere with a few awkward camping spots. The map gets a C tier but that's more because I absolutely adore the design of this map but the gameplay lets it down a ton. Okay, come over here. C come over here, let me tell you something. You guys like straight lines that separate teams that could cause complete snowballs because you keep spawning away from your team and can't naturally make a push? 
Well, good, because that's Rocket Arena. The design is whatever, the map layout sucks a lot with a useless middle section that barely has any use, and the straight line walkways connecting each other aren't fun and can make for ranged hell holes or force people to use death ball strategies. Oh, and the side platforms in the corners are horrible to give hype lasers insane sight lines for like 40% of the map, and the only way to reach them is by wasting a finisher or going out of your way to use your mobility skills to reach them. Truly one of the worst maps and isn't fun at all, honestly. F tier, get this map out of here. Okay, what can I say about this map genuinely? It's symmetrical, barely any cover spots, but range fires are pretty vulnerable in the open to most things. The train hazards do add some caution positioning without feeling redundant or overly oppressive to a flow of gameplay. Well, sometimes. And the design of the map is very nice with a few cool other spots to try and enter enemy team sidelines with the holes above the shops. And these are fairly easy factors for a pretty alright map across the board. Nothing is really great or bad really, it's just checking the boxes for a fine map. B tier for this one. Well, that's a lot just for these maps, but don't worry. We need to go for the Conquer maps now. And these maps will be even weirder since Conquer functions a lot different, and frankly better, compared to Annihilate in many ways. So let's waste no time and get into it. Genuinely, I think Doomspire is kind of whatever. A big open spot with towers and a cool little intersection to hide or fight. Most of the fights are in the surface since the point is there in the center and frankly the map design barely shines in this regard even though it does look nice and the towers are cool to look at. The plane really elevates this map however as it can give an indicator when it comes and it can shift tides and matches easily and help shake up the gameplay if the plane stays on the point which creates some unique gameplay situations. Other than those little shakeups, nothing about this map is really that special so I'll put it in the C tier but rest assured it's probably the most balanced map in that tier. This map is a big hill with barely any cover, some pillars, and true total chaos at the top where the point is. High players also have some crazy camping spots, but none of them are truly bad or broken. To be honest, this map is just utter chaos at every single second and really revolve around just staying at the top and hoping to god you don't die some random crap thrown at you. I think it's fun at times and insanely awful at times due to its chaotic nature, more so than Roblox HQ due to it being conquered. So in the C tier it goes. Love the scenery though. Design wise, I think the darker lighting on this map works very well and looks very nice without looking too dark on the eyes where I can't see anything. Simple but effective. Nuke the Whales is a chaotic map done right. I think the walkways to the point add some level controlled chaos and the only way getting to the point is via the air vents or some mobility tools on lower levels does add a layer of controlling to the amount of chaos as people need to use vents to get on in the first place. The platform also increases the more time it goes on which utilizes the vents more and can add some insane uses for some finishers. Some platform wide tools like katana become much more useful and some like shuriken and subspace can be utilized even more uniquely due to the vents locking a lot of access to the points which they get somewhat locked down. I also think this chaotic nature and small platform can set up, albeit stupid, insane comebacks with finisher use and supports using this small space to avoid danger. The limited area of the point along with the height the platform is at, make this smart choice of risking yourself in the chaos to occupy the point or constantly jumping off to try and get out of harm's way at times. You can even sneak under the point to use the enemy side of the air vent which can spark some interesting interactions and all around, nuke the whales is chaos that is controlled by its small map pacing and overall strategic elements you get deploy as the match goes on. Genuinely have a loving relationship with how many ways match could go back and forth on this map. A tier. Nuke the Whales is a small map with easy quick entry to the point. Protect Telamon is a long winded straight line to the open point with absolutely almost no cover and tons of roofs you can shoot from. So yeah, it's a ranged hell. Not to mention, the design of the map is so dark and bland which does play into the fitting of the map but it makes it feel so lifeless especially when every other map is glimmering with colors. The side routes behind buildings can be used as flank routes even though they are insanely annoying to traverse and really offer no good reward because the map is so wide open you can probably see them either way. At least battles on point can be kind of fun but the issue of unbalanced design for some fires and design lacking along with many other issues of the map give it the D tier. But you could argue it being in the F tier, honestly. Roblox Arcade's design is blasting with colors and great lighting that makes everything easy to see and stand out. The map has a lot of entryways to come out of and tons of routes that could go out from the side or the upper path that leads on top of the toy shop 
which can favor ranged fighters, but restrict access from the point and easy to reach to stop them. The map has a few cool cover spots near the point, and while I think the space added opposite of the shop is a bit unnecessary, it can function for some fighters to play at a distance or to hide to recover some shield or as a small high ground. The walk to point isn't that long, and being on point is fun, and the amount of positions someone can be make it fun to play for all fighters, not giving advantages like Telemon. A solid A tier map that is fun, balanced, and bursting with creativity. Bowling Alley is in the exact same boat. Bursting colors with nice lighting, a point that isn't too far, albeit with only having mainly two entry points from spawn, but both function greatly. The point is mounted slightly in the center, which gives a height difference in fights compared to people outside the point, which can alter some fights due to it. The truck in the center allows for some high ground on the point, despite it marking people as bigger and easier targets for ranged fighters, amongst other small places in and out of the point which can help certain fighters do flanks or attack from a safe distance. There's nothing I can really say, but this map is fun and designed well enough to differentiate itself to other Conquer maps which make it fun, somewhat chaotic with a few walls around the point which allows some creative escapes and entries, and overall just a great map. I think due to this nature, it sticks with the A tier yet again as it's a great map. As the most unique Conquer map, Teapot Observatory has possibly the best design out of any map. The colors, especially at night, look beautiful and the amount of objects and props everywhere make it feel alive and like a teapot observatory without feeling like it is doing too much at times. However, the Conqueror points really range in how good they feel. The first point doesn't feel fun at all, primarily due to its restricting access points and how lopsided this point can feel at the start. The second point in the center is alright, not much cover or safe spaces for ranged fighters, while melee fighters get to play on flat ground with the trampoline in the middle, acting as a way to stay above the point for different fights or hiding finishers. The third point is my personal favorite, as it is like the first point without having a lopsided nature, and getting to the point itself is fairly efficient with the air vents and fair amount of space you have on the point. Some finishers could also hit through the floor for a clever usage of them, and yeah, there's not much else to say for it. Overall, I think the size of the map and somewhat lopsided results that could occur from the design of some of the points give it a seat here. Not a bad map, but not one I want to play much. A symmetrical map that plays with pretty cool terrain and conveyor belts, Bread Factory is honestly fun. The point under a crusher that can insta kill at times is simple, yet fun. It's like the Doom Sprayer plane, but executed much better, as the indicator is much more obvious, the small size of the map allows for easier fights for everyone involved, and the gimmicks are generally fun to play around with. I got nothing to say for this map again, it has a great layout and it's insanely fun to play when in or out of the Conquer Point. Oh, and I love factory designs. A tier. Take what I said about Bread Factory, now make access to the Conquer Point easier, and remove the hazards for platforms on the side of the point which allows for hiding in some sort of flank route around the edges. Every game on this map is a blast and no fighter is truly oppressive or bad on this map. I'd argue Iron Cafe is probably the most balanced map for every fighter with marginally few exceptions. To be frank, I got nothing to say for this as well. It's fun and the design does its job. Especially that board with drink orders, I love that detail so much. Probably the most fun Conquer only map, A tier. Around 85% of the map space is almost never utilized. The map looks somewhat dated and way too damn dark half the time, and the point is completely surrounded by large walls and the walk to the point is somewhat long. It's like Telamon with way more wasted space and somehow even more boring because you can barely attack outside from the point without feeling insanely awkward on skilled walls. Oh yeah, and did I mention this map is way too dark? I can't really explain it without you actually playing the map, but there is a reason why mostly no one likes this map. F tier for sure on this one. Well, that's a lot to take in, but don't worry. We have one more category of maps to talk about, that being hybrid maps. Hybrids combine Conquer and Annihilate as game modes, so that means if a hybrid map can nail both modes, I will be way happier since it's hard to make both modes fun on a map, but also can be way worse if both modes aren't that fun. So let's just waste no time and get into it. The design of this map is amazing. The shaking eyes, the huge banhammer statue, the cages, and everything about the scenery looks great on the eyes and contrasts well with the black and red colors. Gameplay wise, I do think Annihilate is somewhat underwhelming as some games devolve to spawn camping nonsense due to the weirdly placed spawns and how some people might feel the need to stay at the spawn to not get bombarded by everything. But besides that, I find it decently fun to stand at the middle and hold it down. However, Bayland has an insanely fun conquer mode. In some ways, it is like Annihilate but with a heavy emphasis on locking down the middle part of the map which is where the most fun fights happen on this map. There's some cover, cool routes to access from a myriad of directions, and some fair high ground at times. Overall, it's decently fun on Annihilate and incredibly fun on Conquer, and with its great design, it barely misses the S tier but is an amazing A tier map. 
While the design is not excellent, I like the graffiti touches and the map with its weirdly placed ramps and such make it feel like an actual skate park in design. I find a nightlight to actually be fun on this map as a lot of the sand turn sides are used to ton small fights and the uneven ground can help certain fighters utilize high ground to hold more defensive positions along with the spawns connecting paths very well. Conquer is a bit of a downgrade personally as the center point is in a very odd positioning with the poles and all the walls in the way of everything. It can make conquer fights feel awkward or a bit cluttered, and in fact there's not much effective ways to without the point outside of it, aside from the stupidly high platforms near the point, make it feel a little awkward to play personally, which is a rare case of the conquer mode playing worse. I don't think this map should be a hybrid, but both modes play at least well and Annihilate is super fun. So an A tier it is. Dark Age Cliffs is beautiful design wise. The night sky with the lighting and the insides being properly lit up contrasting with the night sky and outside doors look incredibly smooth along with the huge tree near the center that makes the environment tie together greatly made this map stand out in design and look beautiful. And surprisingly, the modes work pretty well on this map. On Annihilate, a lot of fights happen everywhere on the map. You'd see most fights outside but the inside fights don't feel claustrophobic and have tons of room to walk around while having these fights and having tons of escape routes if needed. And the open fights, despite lacking much cover, don't really need cover as hyperlasers are insanely easy to reach and a statue and tree cat does really cool mix up tools and cover for some fighters. Conquer mainly moves all the action to the tree area where the point is. The tree offers some cover and ways to cross up movement. It's somewhat standard, but damn it's pretty fun moving around point and such and a closing area makes people commit to the point. I also love how impactful the last minute of fire can be as its damage can easily be activated due to how much fire is close to the point which can make the fight more intense. I simply think this map's theming and design is absolutely amazing and the gameplay fun both ways with many cool designs and such. Easily one of my favorite maps. This one gets the S tier. Roblox Mall is one of the biggest maps and the design choices are amazing. Looking through all the shots referencing the maps with designs and overall color schemes was an incredible idea tying all the maps together in this universe, which looks great. Yeah, you won't really see these during actual matches because Annihilate hell, but it's amazing to look around. That being said, Annihilate is somewhat weak on this map. It's almost like Conquer and Annihilate are the same mode, but Conquer involves people staying in the middle more, which does make it more fun as a side effect because Annihilate usually can evolve the spawn camping around the spacious spawns of both teams. Conquer is mainly the same stuff minus the spawn camping since people want to win. There's also a good amount of cover against range threats and I go as far to say that melee threats honestly favor this map more since the terrain isn't too intrusive to most of them, but that's perfectly fine honestly. Overall, a pretty balanced map in enjoyability and the design is great. While not the best of its tier, it's definitely an A tier map for me. Look, I really wanted to love this map, I really really do. I thought this map had tons of missed potential throughout all of its free versions. And while I think the third version is the most polished, it's still insanely flawed. Design wise, I don't think it's talked about enough. I think the little mutation stuff on the sides and the Space Knight stuff add lots of stuff from the original thing it's referencing. Which is a shame because this is the only thing I like about this map. On Annihilate, holy hell this is the worst Annihilate map behind Rocket Arena. Half of the time a team will get spawn camped because the spawns on this map are absolute garbage. You'll either have to walk the long straight bridge with no cover to get out, or go through a side flank route which is not only way longer to take, but unless you are a character with great speed, you'll take about 20 or more seconds just taking the damn route because of how much space it takes up. And once you even get through, you will probably be spotted from the flank route in the first place. It just doesn't work well in Annihilate at all and the flank routes almost feel useless. On Conquer, it is better, but that's mainly because you don't need to pay attention to being an asshole to the enemy team. The layout just allows for stupid cheese to happen on this map and while the amount of cover is fine, there is a stupid hyperlaser spot that is not fun and the terrain really lacks any verticality to deal with some threats unless you actively go to the flank routes to mix up movement. The map isn't fun to play and both modes blow to play in pretty much most ways. The design for the side stuff is just slightly saving this map from being in the bottom, the gameplay just never works or flows well half the time. D tier and I'm struggling to leave it out of the F tier. Sword Fight in the Heights is a pretty sick map. Design wise it's pretty on theme with all the colors and the middle portion having a cool sword statue with the circle in the middle is still cool. The few factured pieces of objects and the portals add to the map racing asphalt as well, which is always a nice touch. Gameplay wise, from entering the portal, you get access to a high ground for ranged, a straight path to the middle which can branch to a side path which connects to a flanking path, the high ground path also links another flank route if you want to use that as well, which gives ton of options for every fighter to use. All paths can also be reached by the opposite team well since the map scale is pretty balanced and things are closely tied together. Annihilate matches are honestly somewhat fun. Matches usually have a team holding the center or trying to occupy high ground to have a safe space to stay during the onslaught team battles. 
But spawn camping isn't too possible due to the portals, and it can allow people to wait for the rest of their team to go all out after the portal. Conquer though, this map is so fun on Conquer. All the teams are trying to occupy the middle point and hold it contested as the point isn't too wide and many finishers excel at cleaning off or supporting on the point. It does what Newt the Whales does of trying to prioritize safety over staying on the points, albeit the risk and reward isn't as demanding on this map as getting back on point is fairly easy but it does make some fights on the point strategic especially with all the flank routes in play. This map is genuinely just so fun. Easily one of my favorite maps for both game modes as both play extremely well thanks to the symmetry, balanced pathways for all playstyles, and the point of Conquer being a great way to utilize fire strengths and mobility or area control due to the small point radius. This map is truly an all star in the gameplay department on all fronts, and while it's not the most crazy in design, the design stays true to source material without looking dated or out of place. This map is an easy S tier and probably the best gameplay map. And at long last, we get to our last map that is currently playable, Sword Fighting Tournament. The design for this map is extremely bare bones, but does the job. The map design is pretty and stays true to its source material, but with a cool jumbotron of points for each team, and even an MVP scoreboard would be cooler. The side paths also have boards of banhammer and sword along with tables and chairs with trampolines to enter other sides of spawn. The map also has sprawled out walls at times, making it seem like a literal stadium for gladiators like how the source material is intended. Gameplay wise, it's incredibly simple and fun. A wide open map allows for anyone to be spot and also the wide layout allows for many routes for any fighter. No one is really at a disadvantage whatsoever, it's just pure fun gameplay on both modes. Obviously I think Annihilate is slightly worse, but that doesn't mean it's bad on this map. It's probably the best implementation of Annihilate on a hybrid map. While I don't think Conquer was that surprising, it's still a generally fun map on Conquer as well as expected from pretty much every hybrid map because everyone is on an equal playing field and everyone has a chance to make comebacks and such. This is easily the most balanced map out of all of them and easily the best gameplay based map in the game from all points. Due to this amazing consistency, I'll award it the final S tier of the video. So that's it, right? All the maps ranked here from a very opinionated scale and such. Well, we aren't done yet. Remember those rules at the start? Well, I somewhat lied about most of them because I feel like we should cover all the secret maps with a few exceptions. We have a bunch of unused or unreleased maps to go over, including test escort maps and maps not even in the base game. We won't cover escort variants of already existing maps, so let's waste no time and get to ranking these speedrun style. So, let's go! Based on an Overwatch map to test the escort game mode, it has great buildings and interior simply to test escort mode. Can I even count this in the tier list as a map? Eh, whatever, let me make a new tier called the unfinished escort map and just put it there. Same deal as Canada really, I got nothing much to say, but hey, it has cool gameplay I guess, into the same tier it goes. Another map to test escort mode, but it's a straight line with a funny lizard. Y you know the deal now. With our actual first real map here, this map is honestly very pleasing to the eyes. However, its verticality can make it a giant mess to play on a night late, but against certain fighters. Other than that, I think this map would be somewhat fun to play. C tier I guess. This map was made just to show off the trailer for Scythe and also the first time I actively heard Most Wanted, which is pretty cool. The map was definitely not designed to be a playable map because there is no symmetry and the bounds are screwed up. So I guess I could change this here to just unfinished map maybe or something like that, I don't know. Same realm as Silent Sun, but I think Annihilate Combat would be interesting. From the layers of the map to the teleports and conveyor belt waterfalls, this could be a unique experience for most fighters and tons of flanks. Also this map is gorgeous as well, so C tier as well. Boom ball! Woohoo! Okay, I don't know where to put this. I guess in unfinished maps, even though it is finished, I don't really know. April Fool's map. Do I say more? F tier. Cool concept for a conquer map, especially in the last minute where all the paths form, but low gravity on a fighting match permanently would be an absolute hellhole of a match. D tier. I genuinely wish this map sort of stayed after April Fools. It was a decent map and I kinda wish it had Annihilate since this map is actually fun to walk around and play on. Honestly a great attempt with a joke here. B tier. It's the old ass Foff. Do I even need to say anything here? No I don't. F tier. Never ever make a conquer map where the point is so high up vertically every time. At least Nuke the Whales gave springs cause this map you need to climb all the way up. Yeah, I am glad this map got removed and didn't stay after that one festival or something. D tier. Oof! 
That's a lot of maps. Maybe I shouldn't do something this long ever again, or maybe I shouldn't make scripts that are over 6k words because, yeah, no. This was a long script to get the most of my thoughts out. I hope you enjoyed this quote-unquote small video before a big one I was working on during this. I put a lot of work into this one and appreciate anyone that sees through this entire video. So, with that, thanks for watching and I hope you have a good day.